All right, just so everyone knows, we are recording this webinar. As always, while we're waiting, I have a really cheesy photography joke, and you'll see that cheesy photography joke is also a pun, a really bad one. But what's the difference between a pepperoni pizza and a struggling photographer? Anybody? Anybody? A pepperoni pizza can at least feed a family of four. All right, I know that was really bad. Um, but in all seriousness, to those struggling photographers, it is not easy. Successful photographers are the ones who stick with it and uh, really make an effort to be successful. And uh, yeah, so that was our little uh, humor to get started here to warm up. So welcome to our third webinar for the Fujifilm course membership, not affiliated with Fujifilm Corporation. This webinar is going to be a discussion format all about Fujifilm film simulations. We will have time for a Q&A at the end. You can leave questions and comments in the chat window. And Nico, who is our co-host here today, will go through those. And we'll stop the presentation at various times to um, go through your questions and your comments. For those of you just kind of dipping your toes in the water here, checking out the membership, you're not sure if you want to stick with it. Um, this is the third webinar that we've done. As I mentioned, we do a mix of webinars every single month. Uh, this month, we're doing a discussion topic all about film simulations. We also do a Q&A where members have a chance to submit questions. Uh, prior to the webinar, we'll pick four or five and then go into those questions and answer those in depth. And then the third format that we just did last month is a live photo critique where members have a chance to submit photos for a live photo critique. And it is a great learning experience for everyone to look at ways where we can all improve our photography and talk about that. Also, don't forget about the September photo challenge for a chance to win a $50 photography gift card. The topic this month in homage to launching the Intro to Macro Photography course recently. This month, it's all about the details. So you don't need a macro lens or do macro photography for this photo challenge, but just get close to something. Show us the details. Show us a different perspective than what we're normally used to seeing. More of a photographers tend to do all these wide angle photos. Get close. Um, there's a Robert Kappa said something about if you're Photos aren't good enough, you're not close enough. So that's what we're gonna try to practice for this month's photo challenge. And that is open until the end of September. So for this webinar, I just wanna let you all know what we're gonna be talking about, all about film simulations. We are not going to do film simulation comparisons for one hour. I want to get a little more into the background of the film simulations, the philosophy behind the film simulations. So we're gonna start by looking at the history. We are gonna look at some comparisons, talking about the characteristics of the film simulations, how and when to use them, how film simulations benefit raw photographers. And as I mentioned, we will save some time for some questions at the end of this webinar. So we're going to start with a quick poll. Uh, Nico is going to go ahead and launch this first poll just to get an idea. Who here is currently taking advantage of film simulations to customize and style their photos? We'll leave that open for a few minutes while you are answering that. Um, All right, yeah, so far we're looking at 100%. One thing that I am actually kind of surprised is, because I love film simulations, but one thing that I am a little bit surprised about is that even professional uh, Fuji X photographers, like the um, photographers that Fujifilm has identified to be their ambassadors, some of them really don't even know that film simulations are there. I mean, they know they're there, but they don't know what they're really for and they've never used them. And, uh, you know, I think it's quite shocking. 
I don't want to say sad, but you know, this is one of the things of why we love these cameras and they're so powerful. And that's what we're going to get into here. So 80% of the respondents said that they are currently using film simulations and we'll get that extra 20% um, to try them out at least uh, who will understand them at the end of this webinar. Okay, so let's go into a brief history of the film simulations. And we need to start with film. What is film? What did film do? Film cartridges, and we're gonna talk Fujifilm here, were designed for certain situations, certain lighting, certain subject matter, the kind of, uh, you know, where you were going to print your photos, how you were going to develop them those films would be selected by the photographer based on all of those things. So as an example of some Fuji Chrome and Fuji Color films, we had Fuji Chrome Provia uh, pictured here, a very general purpose film rendered very natural colors, worked in a, a wide variety of subjects. We had Fuji Chrome Velvia, which was a favorite of mine uh, in college when I discovered photography living in Arizona. Really, really great sunsets, very vivid landscapes. And this film helped bring out those colors. Velvia produced vivid colors that had very strong contrast. It was optimized for nature. The engineers that created Velvia did so in such a way that greens and blues were rendered kind of uh, you know how our eyes wanted to see those royal blue skies, soft green grass. That's kind of how they built that film around. We had Fujicolor Pro 400H, which uh, gave you a very flat contrast and soft skin tones, ideal for uh, you know weddings, portraits, things like that. And even as specific as Fujicolor Superior Premium 400, which is only sold in Japan, in that film, is specialized to render Japanese skin tones in a very pleasing way. So there's a lot of ways where you can get into the chemistry of how colors are rendered um, and how they react to different colors and different lighting. And that's really uh, what the film choices that film photographers have are all about. And so, you know, as mentioned, those photographers would out of all those choices, select what was appropriate for the subject, the lighting, and the intent. Photographers could later take those exposures into the dark room and apply additional techniques, such as pushing or pulling, which is increasing or decreasing the exposure, doing some color correction using color filters. Pictured here, Provia is a daylight white balanced film. You can see it says daylight on that film cartridge. If you were taking a picture, outside and the clouds rolled in very thick overcast layer that would alter the colors of the photo and so you could correct that in the dark room you could do dodging and burning which is making selected areas of your photo darker or brighter add a vignette there were a lot of different ways that you could uh, further process this film when you were complete so now we get into digital. So in the early 2000s, the pictured here is the Fujifilm FinePix S3 Pro. Fujifilm in developing their first digital cameras kind of wanted to carry on this tradition of their world renowned film stocks. And so this first camera had three profiles. It had one that was called F1, F2 and standard. There were really no other names beyond that. But these were meant to give photographers using their digital cameras a chance to apply what looked like a Fujifilm film to the final picture. Now, one thing to note is that these are not like, if you have ever shot with a Canon or Nikon or Sony, they all have a picture profile or a creative mode, usually called something like landscape natural portrait, things like that. Fujifilm went far beyond what all of those other cameras are doing in the way that it rendered the final picture that came out with the digital camera. 
And as we continue here, I just want to remind you all, if you do have any questions or comments as we go through here, you can throw them in the chat and we will stop uh, in certain times of the presentation to get those answered. Now, what's important to note in the way that Fujifilm developed these profiles in their digital cameras is that the engineers who worked on the analog film, the actual chemistry, were involved in developing the digital film simulations. So the engineers who knew what, how Velvia was designed to, uh, and how the colors responded in Velvia, they worked with the digital, uh, digital version of Velvia for the film simulation. So they were able to do all of this color and tone mapping in creating the film simulations where, for example, there would be hue changes in certain shades of colors. As we'll see, Astia, um, a red in Astia may render a little more crimson than another film simulation. The saturation increases for certain colors. Velvia, greens and blues are much more saturated than yellows are. Um, shadow tones may be lifted while highlights are unaffected. We see that in nostalgic neg. Shadow contrast may be increased while highlight contrast is unaffected. We see that in classic chrome. So it's much, much more involved, much more detailed, and much more complex than just moving a vibrance slider as we would in Lightroom or Photoshop, and then calling that our landscape picture profile as some other camera brands do. There's a lot to it. And we'll kind of get into some of that later as we go out throughout this presentation. Current Fujifilm cameras today, the X and GFX system have an evolving selection of film simulations. The X-Pro1 I think had three or four, um, and today we're up to I think 16 film simulations with the X-H2 and the latest GFX cameras. So the engineers are continually not just adding new film simulations to every line of camera, but also uh, continually tweaking the current existing film simulations to make them uh, more and more, I, I don't want to say accurate, we'll get into that in just a minute, but they are working on them as every new processor and sensor comes out. Now, speaking of accuracy, film simulations are just that, they are simulations. They, um, they never claim to be exactly like the film as much as they do map out the tones and the colors for these film simulations, you'll never be able to perfectly replicate the chemistry that happens in analog film uh, in a digital format like this, but it's very, very close. So no questions so far. So we will keep plugging along here and get into our characteristics of the film simulations. And we are gonna have some side-by-side -side comparisons. And whenever I do things like this, everyone always wants more comparisons. I could show comparisons for hours and hours on end and people will still say that wasn't enough comparisons. Well, th they are so complex and so nuanced that I will never, no matter how many comparisons I show, be able to demonstrate how complex and how nuanced these film simulations react to how you expose your photo, what you're taking a picture of, which colors are in your photo. And so what I want to do here is just kind of give you a basic understanding of what each film simulation is, and then we'll look at some of the philosophy later. So for each film simulation, we are going to uh, give a, a brief rundown of the general color and tonal characteristics, as well as the general usage of what you might wanna think of for using that film simulation. We'll look at some color swatch comparisons as we uh, see here using the color checker card, some image comparisons. And I just want to do a uh, note that all of these images are straight out of XRAW Studio, which is Fujifilm's desktop interface with your camera to process photos in your camera with different film simulations. So it is these are straight out of the camera with no other adjustments made. There are no tonal adjustments or color adjustments or cropping or anything like that. 
It's just how I capture the image um, and then change the film simulation. There will never be any replacement for you just going out and experimenting on your own to see what these are doing to your photos. As I mentioned, I, I could show you comparisons for one day straight, and that will not teach you as much as if you just go out and do it yourself. So without further ado, we will get into our first film simulation, Provia, which is called Standard based on the Provia film stock. They call it Standard because this film simulation pretty much works for everything. The color is very natural, has a normal saturation. Same thing with the tone and the contrast. It's very normal, very lifelike. And you can use it for just about anything. Landscapes, outdoor portraits. This photo on the right is a uh, night photo taken at, I think, ISO 12,800. Provia just gives it a very lifelike, very natural rendition. And so in the absence of any other information, you just don't know which film simulation would work best for the situation that you're in, you can usually never go wrong with Provia. And because of that, when we do the comparisons for the following film simulations after this, we are going to compare all of the film simulations to Provia, because that is the most natural film simulation that we do have in these cameras. Velvia is called Vivid. I already spoke about this. Um, it was my favorite film to use when uh, photographing film living in Arizona. Very highly saturated film simulation. As we can see in this photo here, the blues are shifted a little more towards the magenta to give us a much uh, more bolder royal sky that is also saturated. It also has a lot of contrast to give it some more depth as we normally do when we are creating a standard landscape photo. And so that's why uh, people tend to use this film simulation for landscapes and sunsets is because we get those really strong colors and uh, depth that we have with that contrast. Also great for nature, just the way that it renders greens um, and, and reds and blues works very, very well for nature photography. It can clip or oversaturate some colors. In this example here, this is Provia in the upper left and Velvia in the lower right. You can see how this photo with Velvia does have a lot more contrast. Uh, with the Provia photo, you can see some of the uh, more detail in the background and the foreground up in the hills. In Velvia, that's in a lot more shadow. It's a bit more, uh, it's a bit darker. The sky, however, is a much richer, more saturated sky. Those yellows, however, are on the verge of clipping, being oversaturated, just because that's what Velvia tends to do. So when I'm working with Velvia, I usually will uh, just barely underexpose Velvia, because when you underexpose Velvia, it does give you much richer, more saturated colors, and you can avoid some of that oversaturation. Because of the saturation, found in Velvia. It's not the best for portraits or just taking pictures of people in general. As we see here, this man looks like he's wearing red paint on his face just because Velvia likes to saturate reds and his face is already red from working outside in the heat. So we tend to avoid Velvia when photographing people. It can make their skin look quite unnatural. Astia. However, if you want strong colors without ruining someone's skin, Astia, also called soft, can be a good choice for that. The soft name can mislead some people. Astia does have some good contrast. But what the name soft means is uh, referring to the skin. So the, the colors in Astia are normal colors the reds and the blues have a slight hue shift to them, and I find them a little more vibrant. However, the skin tone region uh, is much softer. So that red skin is not as red when rendered with Astia. It does preserve some better highlight detail. So the highlights aren't quite as harsh. 
The shadows, however, are fairly rich. Uh, and Astia works well for outdoor portraiture. Travel, this is my favorite film simulation to use for travel photography when I'm around uh, bright colors, particularly in Latin America, Astia is my go-to. It can also work for landscape photography and documentary photography. If we look at this example here, you can see how the blue in the dry suit is shifted uh, to a little more purplish blue. It appears more vibrant. The bluish uh, fog, that's actually fog behind this diver, is a little more vibrant. However, the reds around his skin uh, are not. Uh, actually, they are, appear a little bit softer than the Provia version on the left. Another example here that kind of shows that, you can see how the red in the shirt, Provia on the left, Astia on the right, that shirt has more crimson. It's much deeper, vibrant red than on the left. You can also kind of see in the helmet and the sky uh, in Provia, the blues appear to be a little more cyan, whereas in Astia on the right, those blues um, are a much richer blue. The, it's a little hard to tell uh, in this example. However, the highlight detail on her face, uh, she doesn't have as strong a highlights on her face in the Astia version. That's because it's called soft and it, pre, it helps give softer skin tones, especially outdoors. It's a great outdoor portrait film simulation. But overall, I really do like Astia for the way it does render the reds and the blues compared to Probia, as we see here. Then we get to Classic Chrome, which is another one of the oldest film simulations. This is not based on any specific Fujifilm film simulation. It's more based on the uh, Kodachrome and Ektachrome uh, films that you would find um, in documentary photography and, and still do, you know, like in the 80s. Um, this film simulation is uh, great for documentary photography. The colors, it does have some cyan shifts. It's not quite as saturated as Provia. It does have some deeper contrast in the shadows, but not so much in the highlights. Great, great choice for documentary photography, street photography. You can even use it for travel and landscapes. This example here, Provia on the left, Classic Chrome on the right. You can see how that sky really is a different shade of blue. And that bright red truck is also uh, not as saturated in Classic Chrome. Going to another example here, you can see kind of the same thing in the sky. You have that cyan shift desaturated. Those orange flowers are especially desaturated some more. Just overall gives it a much more documentary type feeling to it. Proneg High is the first of the Proneg film simulations. We also have Proneg Standard based on the NS160 portrait film. Colors in Proneg High are slightly desaturated, especially around the skin tones because it is a portrait film simulation. So we don't want to oversaturate the skin too much. It has a fairly natural contrast. Because of that, Proneg High is a good film simulation to use for outdoor portraiture where you may already have some strong shadows. Um, you're not in control of the light as much. So uh, the contrast that is built into Proneg High works well for that. It's also another great choice for street photography. And I am using Proneg High more and more for my documentary photography. Depending on the feel that I want, I will bounce back and forth between um, Classic Chrome and Proneg High for documentary photography. In this example, outdoor portrait, you can see the face is not as red with Proneg High, which is on the right, as it is with Probia, which is on the left. You can especially see that in the lips that are not as saturated. And one other thing that you may not notice, if you look at the uh, black clothing around her head, in Provia on the left, it has a much uh, stronger blue tint 
than proneg high on the right where that black does indeed look black. That's because of that desaturation and that shadow contrast. For indoor portraiture, you may want to try proneg standard. This is desaturated even more than proneg high, especially in the skin tones, and it has a much flatter contrast. Because of this, this is the preferred film simulation to use under controlled lighting, where you can create the shadows where you want them in a studio environment. Uh, and that kind of frees up um, or, or gives you a much more natural way of controlling those shadows than proneg high. And just here's a quick fun comparison of Provia, proneg high, and proneg standard. You can see how from left to right, it becomes flatter and more desaturated. That's not to say that you cannot use proneg standard outdoors. You can use whatever film simulation you want. Um, just know that you won't have as much contrast using proneg standard than that you would using proneg high. There's another indoor studio example. If you were doing this portrait with Provia on the left, you would definitely have to take this into a post-processing program and fix some of those skin tones so they weren't so saturated and in your face. But using Proneg standard, that film simulation is already doing that for you. Now we get into classic Neg, which is one of the newer film simulations. It was introduced in, I think, the X Pro 3, X T4, X 100V generation. This is a very fun film simulation, and it's wild. It's all over the place. It does overall have a warmer tint than Probia. It's a little more desaturated, except I find that the warmer tones, like the reds and ambers, do retain some of that saturation to give it an even uh, warmer feeling. It does have an increased harder contrast than Provia. And it's great to use for documentary photography. You can even use it for outdoor portrait photography uh, based on the situation and the look that you want to have for that portrait. Summer days, you know, if you're shooting out in the desert on a hot summer day, classic Neg will help add that feeling of being in the desert on a hot summer day. You can see in this example here, look in the sky, look at the clouds. The classic Neg example on the right, those clouds almost have a reddish, reddish magenta tint to them compared to the Provia example on the left. So that's kind of an expectation of what you can get using classic Neg. Also the truck, whereas in Provia, it's more red. With classic Neg, that truck looks more orange. Everything is just warmer about the entire photo. Here's an outdoor portrait, uh, environmental portrait of a uh, cowboy with his horse. You can especially see in the shirt here. Look at the color shift in that shirt. It goes from red to orange. The sky also has a uh, redder tint to it. And the, uh, the horse, is even though the horse is brown in Provia, has a much more desaturated look in classic Neg. Going to nostalgic Neg. This is the newest film simulation found in the X-H2 and the latest GFX100 cameras. I haven't had much of a chance to use nostalgic Neg yet. I, I did use it on this last documentary trip that I did with the Pony Express riders that we see here. I think I'm gonna have some fun with it. So I'm gonna keep trying it out. But overall for the color, like classic Neg, it does have some amber tints to it that are even stronger, uh, more saturated. The tone, however, it really lifts up the shadows. The shadows are nowhere near as dark in nostalgic Neg. So you can make out a lot of those shadow details and shadow color. However, it still has sharp highlights, as we can see in this example here. It can be a you know, great use for documentary photography, street photography, family portraits, uh, family photography. 
kind of like the, the reason why the engineers developed this film simulation is they wanted to emulate the look that you would expect going through a shoebox of old photographs that you know were captured in the 70s and 80s, kind of that nostalgic look. And that's why it's called Nostalgic Neg. In this example, we have Provia on the left and Nostalgic Neg on the right. And just looking at the Nostalgic Neg photo, I can kind of imagine that photo being in a shoebox somewhere um, in the closet that's been sitting there for decades. Um, so it, it's a fun film simulation. Unfortunately, it's only available in the newer Fujifilm models. Uh, Nico, do we have any questions so far? Not seeing any questions in the chat. All right. Cool, we will keep pressing on then. Eterna, uh, also introduced with uh, the X-H1, I think the X-T3, that generation, uh, is called Cinema. Now, if you've ever done video before, you may know Eterna. It's a Fujifilm actual film that was used uh, for movies, for videos. So this film is, this film simulation is designed to emulate that. Has very accurate colors. However, it's very desaturated. Same thing with the tone. It's very flat. You have very soft highlights, very soft shadows with Eterna. Now, what this allows you to do with filmmakers is they kind of want desaturated colors and flat tones so that they can then increase saturation if they want or increase highlight shadow contrast in the video later. And that's kind of what you can do with Eterna. Great film simulation to use for documentary photography. Video works for landscapes as well. You can see in this example, the sky, which has a blue tint to it with Provia, is very desaturated with Eterna with a much flatter contrast. Here's kind of an example of you know, Provia on the left, Eterna on the right. If I were watching a video documentary about this market in Guatemala, I would almost kind of expect it to have the characteristics of the one on the right, just a little bit flatter, a little bit desaturated. Every film simulation that I've talked about so far, where I've mentioned documentary photography, the whole point of those colors being desaturated is that it allows the story to come out more, where you may not be as distracted by the colors because there's less of them there and the story just suddenly pops out. Eterna Bleach Bypass, a newer film simulation. Don't let the Eterna name fool you. It is completely different than regular Eterna. Uh, bleach Bypass refers to the bleaching uh, developing process that would almost nearly strip all colors out of the photo. So it is very, very desaturated. Depending on the original colors and tone in your photo, you may think that photos created with Eterna Bleach Bypass are black and white. That's how desaturated some of these can be. However, it does have a very, very, very hard, strong contrast in both the highlight tones and the shadow tones. But it can work well for documentary and video. I, I rarely use Eterna Bleach Bypass. It seems to be a very finicky film simulation. It can look great for some photos and just look like absolute garbage for others. So this is one you kind of have to get used to. Here's an example again of our cowboy with a horse. You can see just how overall the uh, darker colors, the darker tones are much darker and the colors are almost completely gone out of this picture. So that's it for our color film simulations. We're going to now go into our uh, Acros film simulation. I do want to point out now that we're not gonna talk about sepia or monochrome uh, for reasons that are covered in the film simulation course. Uh, but Acros is based on the Fujifilm Acros Neopan film, black and white film. I say color, there is no color, obviously. However, Acros is designed to react to certain colors differently. 
it will have a different tone curve based on the colors that are in your photo. So whereas monochrome, if you go to the monochrome film simulation, that's just Probia completely desaturated. But Acros will actually respond differently based on the colors in the photo. For the tone, it does have softer shadows, so you can see shadow detail better, but it still has some crisp highlights. Overall, a great black and white film simulation. Acros also has color filters. You will see Acros or A Y A R A G. Those are ways of controlling contrast in your picture. So uh, a yellow filter will allow the yellow warmer colors to pass through while blocking colors more or less opposite on the color wheel. Uh, just different ways to get different looks with Acros. So Acros plus yellow gives you a little bit stronger contrast than Acros. Acros plus R or red has very strong contrast. Great for landscapes. We'll see some examples here in a minute. And then Acros plus the green filter is great for uh, rendering fair skin. It can accentuate blemishes. So you really only want to use it with fair skin. If anyone has acne, it's going to make that acne stand out even more. Here's an example of Acros compared to Acros with the red filter. You can see how much darker the sky is here. That's because it's blocking the cooler colors, the blues. And that's really increasing the contrast between the sky and the clouds. Uh, one reason why this is a good, uh, can be a good choice to use for landscape photography. You can also see the truck. Uh, with the red filter, the red truck is brighter. So overall, a lot more contrast. Here's Acros with Acros plus the yellow filter. Still some added contrast in the sky, added contrast in the foreground, but not as much as if we used the red filter. And then Acros with the green filter, she does have a very fair skin. So we can use the green filter here. But if you compare the skin tone between regular Acros and Acros with the green filter, the face is much, uh, it's, it's less bright. It's a little toned down. It's much softer now using the green filter. Acros also has a unique grain addition that you can add. On the top left, we have regular Acros. On the bottom right, we have Acros with the yellow filter. So we added a little bit of contrast with a strong, large grain, which is especially visible in the sky here. That was uh, captured at ISO 6400. And now whatever noise you might think would be there now turns into a beautiful uh, film looking grain. So here are just some other comparisons and we're gonna go through these really quick. Uh, you can go back to the playback and pause this if you wanna look at these some more, but I wanna make sure we get through the rest here. But the whole point of film simulations is to kind of pick out what you wanna say with your photos, the look that you want to have with your photos um, and try out a few. So we can have completely different looks, completely different feelings, just by going from like Astia to classic neg or Eterna to classic neg. Very, very different looks for each of these photos. All of the blues in this picture, the blues are rendered differently in every single picture. Same with the contrast. So again, it's all just about the story that you're trying to tell and the look that you're going for. I thought this was a fun one to throw in here comparing all of these different thread colors. If you look at Velvia in the upper right, compared to Eterna Bleach Bypass on the lower left. Very, very, very different style between those two pictures. Here's a Manzanar. What, what's the story? What message are you trying to say with this picture? You could pick Provia, Velvia, Classic Neg, or Classic Chrome, and they're all gonna say very, very different things. So, after going through that, after what you have used, or even if you haven't used film simulations, we're going to do another poll. Uh, Nico, if you want to go ahead and launch that, I know you are only going to be able to pick one. It's going to be very difficult, I know, but out of all of those and what you use, what is your 
favorite film simulation. And I'm kind of expecting the results to be all over the place here because everyone has different tastes and different styles. And that's the beautiful thing about film simulations is that we have these opportunities. So we'll give you another minute to answer that and we'll keep pressing on. So it looks like for the final results, Classic Neg actually wins. 40% uh, with Classic Neg and then a mix of Classic Chrome, Astia, and Provia for the others. Yeah, and if, if you haven't used any of these film simulations uh, because they're not available in your camera, rent one that has them and see um, if they can uh, do something for your photography. So cool, classic neg. I was not expecting that. That's awesome. All right, so now how do we use film simulations? This is a mindset shift, and it's probably the most difficult thing for photographers to get used to with the film simulations, and it's why a lot of photographers don't use film simulations. We have become so obsessed with gear in our consumer economy. Everything is gear, 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 gear that we have forgotten about the photographic process, the composition, the finding gesture and timing, um, and when we're actually gonna press the shutter button, how we're gonna frame our photograph. The same thing is happening with post-processing. Everyone just wants to run out, point the camera at something pretty, press the shutter button, and come back and spend an hour processing that picture. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with spending an hour processing a picture. I do find something wrong with running out, grabbing a quick photo, and then coming back because we've become so reliant on post-processing. We should just go out and enjoy photography, create great photographs, and stop obsessing over all the other things. And film simulations allow us to do that. Let's look back again at the film photographers. Ask yourself, what would a film photographer do before digital? A film photographer would pick a film stock appropriate for their subject, their lighting, the story that they're telling, load that in their camera, and then just go out and create great photographs. Superior is pictured here. Classic Neg, uh, everyone's favorite film simulation is loosely based on superior. And they would just go out and capture those pictures. We're doing kind of the same thing with film simulations. These are a selection of film stocks that we can interchange. We can reload in our camera between one picture and the next. We don't have to you know, complete a roll of 12 or 24. We can go through these different films from one photo to the next to get the appropriate look for the subject, the lighting, the style, and the story that we are telling. This picture on the right, this is the film simulation menu. If you go into the image quality setting menu and then film simulation, you can scroll through the different film simulations and see how your photo will look with the selected film simulation. In shooting mode, you can also press the Q menu. New cameras have this Q menu transparent background where you can go through, highlight the film simulation box and scroll through the different film simulations and see how that is affecting your photo and if that's the style that you want. One thing to note about the camera setup, film simulations, whatever you have chosen, those are recorded to your final JPEG file and the raw thumbnail. The, uh, you know, if you record raw and you go to your file browser and you see the raw images and those thumbnails, those thumbnails are created using your film simulation. But when you open up the raw photo in Adobe Photoshop, for example, uh, you will lose that. But the film simulation is recorded to the JPEG file. So if you are recording, um, in this example here, that camera, either fine or normal, which are your JPEG options, if you're only recording those, 
the film simulation that you have selected in your camera is your final film simulation. You're stuck with it. If you are recording JPEG plus RAW, which is either fine plus RAW or normal plus RAW, you have that JPEG file with that film simulation uh, recorded with it. You also have the RAW file to allow you to change the film simulation after you capture the photo, which is a really cool thing to be able to do with the raw photo is say, you know what? Astia was the wrong film simulation to use here. Let's see what it looks like with Proneg High. And you can do that in playback. As you're playing back your images, you press the Q button. Every camera has a Q button and select raw conversion. And in the raw conversion menu, you can go to film simulation and then select the new film simulation that you want to try. And the camera will spit out that photo with your new film simulation. And you can save that to your memory card if that's the final photo that you want to do. But again, this is only available if you are recording the raw file. There is also a film simulation bracketing option. Every camera has this. Let's say that you are uh, capturing a landscape and you are torn between using Provia, Velvia, or Astia. You just don't know which one would work best for this landscape. You can go into film simulation bracket, select those three film simulations, as we see in this example here. This is in the uh, drive mode menu. Press the shutter button, and the camera is going to capture one photo. It's going to process that one photo three times with each of those three film simulations. And those are all covered uh, in the advanced Fujifilm Drive Modes course, how to use the film simulation bracket mode. It's different from camera to camera, uh, so we can't go through every model here, uh, but that is covered in further detail in that course. So you press the shutter button once, and you're going to get three different looking photos processed with the three different film simulations. Just a word of caution, though, I would not use film simulation bracket all the time, because for every time you press the shutter button, you're going to end up with three more files on your memory card. You can imagine how confusing that could be, how many photos you're going to end up with by the end of the day it might be a little too much. So really only use it when you want to see what those three different options would look like. You can also post process JPEGs with the film simulation that you captured. There are a lot of very loud people on the internet, some who even have their own shirts that say, I shoot raw to advertise how much better they are than everyone else because they shoot raw. It's all nonsense. You can, especially with your now understanding of film simulations, capture a JPEG take it into a post-processing program and make some slight changes to the tone curve, you know, add or reduce contrast, the saturation. You can make some very slight temperature and tint corrections. Because it is the JPEG file, not all of that information is there, but you can make small adjustments. You can add a vignette. You can do some dodging and burning. This does require, however, that your JPEG is pretty darn close to how you want it at capture. So you need to get the correct exposure or really close to the correct exposure at capture and also have your color, your white balance, accurate at capture. And again, we have an entire course all about that, doing that. That's the perfect Fujifilm JPEGs course. But that is an option for how you can use film simulations to speed up your photographic workflow and not get drawn into the weeds of post-processing, as many photographers do. You can also further customize your film simulations. Uh, Fuji X Weekly, Richie Rush, has uh, what you may have heard of as film recipes. His website has a library of hundreds of film recipes to further customize these film simulations. They're called custom settings in the menu. I call it pre-processing. Instead of post-processing, I look at my scene. I think about which film simulation I want to use for this scene. 
if I really like Velvia for the colors, but Velvia is maybe a little too saturated, I can decrease the saturation of Velvia in the camera by going to the color option and then just reducing the color so it's not quite as saturated. You can make tone curve adjustments, highlight tone, shadow tone, shift the color using the white balance shift option. There are a lot of ways that you can take all of those film simulations that we just talked about and further customize them to your own unique style and your own unique taste. And as always, we have a course about that, creating unique Fujifilm film recipes course, where we go through how to identify the looks and the styles that you like as a photographer, pick the film simulation that would work best as a starting point for that, and then how to customize that film simulation further using Fujifilm's image quality settings tools uh, to give you a style that you like. And now with that, you have already pre-processed your photo before you press the shutter button. You press the shutter and now you're, you're done. You don't have to necessarily take that into a raw processor and spend an hour on the picture because you did all the hard work on the front end and now you can just go out and enjoy photography, which again is the whole idea, the whole point of film simulations and why I love them so much. But what about if you are a raw only photographer? How do film simulations benefit you? Well, there's a couple of ways. I was uh, photographing a project in Africa and a friend was a very colorful city in Africa. And a friend, uh, I caught a glance of his LCD screen and he was in black and white. And it kind of threw me off. There's all these beautiful colors. Why are you photographing in black and white? Well, it helped his composition. By removing the distractions of all of those colors, all he saw in black and white were shapes and lines and geometric relationships. And so now seeing those shapes, lines, geometric relationships, it really helped him improve his compositions, get cleaner compositions. And then he would have that raw file. And when he downloaded it to the computer, the color magically came back because it is the raw file. But going to that black and white profile helped him see the world better. And so you can go into Acros or Monochrome and compose in black and white as a raw photographer and then get your color photograph uh, to help your composition. That's a one thing, one technique you can try out. And then film simulations uh, close to your own style can give you an idea of what your final photo will look like after you have processed it. So if your landscapes look kind of like Velvia, but you want to have that raw file as insurance to make other adjustments, you don't really like the way Velvia handles one color, you can still photograph in Velvia just so you can kind of preview what that photo might look like after you're done going through it uh, with your raw processor of choice. Um, and so that's another thing that can help expedite your workflow and give you better photographs using film simulations, even if you are only recording the raw file format. Uh, real quick on Adobe profiles, Adobe does have these camera matching profiles. They meet the intent of film simulations, but they're not engineered the same. Uh, Fujifilm was not involved in creating Adobe's profiles. However, they might be enough to get you to like that 90% solution where, you know, you do like Velvia, but you want that raw file. You can go into uh, Lightroom or Photoshop, apply Velvia to your raw file as a starting point, and then further process that raw file to tweak it just how you want it. Here's just an example of a classic NAG. This is the Adobe profile on the upper left and uh, Fujifilm's classic neg on the lower right. There's a little bit of variation in the color of the shirt. The shadow tones aren't quite as rich as deep in Adobe's version, but it's pretty close. And if all you're going for is the intent of classic neg, the profiles may just do that for you. 
So uh, another benefit to raw photographers understanding film simulations. But regardless of whether or not you record raw or JPEG, whoever you are, it's important. It can really benefit your photography. Understand which genres or subjects that you photograph. And then for each of those genres or subjects, identify your top favorite film simulation for that genre or subject, plus a second, like your second place uh, film simulation for that genre or subject. And then just go out and practice photographing using those film simulations. And those choices, your top one and two, are going to change over time. But that's why you go out and you practice these things. You learn what these film simulations are going to do based on how you expose the photo, based on the lighting, which colors are in the photo, what's in front of your camera. And eventually you can get to a point where the photos that you capture when you press the shutter button are the final photos that you want. And you are no longer spending hours in front of a computer processing. And I've just found that photography for me is a lot more fun after having understood the film simulations. And I take my, I uh, got my X100V here and going through my custom settings for my X100V, I have found that for travel, Astia is my film simulation of choice for travel. For portrait photography, it's Proneg High. For documentary photography, I have two. I have Classic Chrome, and my next documentary style is Classic Neg. So depending on the story I'm telling, whether I want a warm feeling or a cooler feeling, I choose between Classic Chrome or Classic Neg. Landscapes, Velvia, that hasn't changed for over 20 years. And then a black and white, uh, profile uh, preset using Acros with the yellow filter. And those are my starting points for those genres of photography. And again, you know, it's just made photography a lot more fun for me. So we're going to open it up to some Q&A now. I know it's, we're at the hour mark. We had a lot of information to cover, but um, Nico, do we have any questions in there right now? Nope, no questions. No questions? All right, well, we'll stick around for uh, another couple of minutes. If anybody does have any questions, uh, you can throw them in the chat. Uh, Kurt did note that Capture One enables you to select different film simulations and apply them to raw photos. Uh, yes, I didn't mention Capture One, but very much like uh, Photoshop, like Adobe, Capture One also has film simulations. So uh, like those Adobe profiles, you can do that in Capture One. Capture One did get help with Fujifilm developing those profiles, those film simulations within Capture One. Still, they are not the 100% film simulation for uh, as compared to Fujifilm. Now, when I am working on paid assignments, I am working with RAW. Um, it's too much uh, at stake to only shoot the JPEG photo. So I, I do shoot raw and JPEG. And then if I need to make any adjustments to the raw photos, I do that in Capture One, applying the film simulation within Capture One. Again, get me close, get me to that 90% point, and then I can make other adjustments within Capture One. But again, starting with the base film simulation. So if there are, are there any more questions, Don't see anything else coming in. Um, Brian, thank you uh, for the feedback. I really appreciate you uh, and everyone else joining us today. Uh, I, this is recorded. This will be uh, uploaded to the Fujifilm membership tonight. So if you wanna go back and replay anything, look at some of those comparisons a little more, uh, you can find that in the membership. You can also find much more detailed uh, looks at these film simulations in the film simulation course, which is due for an update now that Nostalgic Neg is out and I've had a chance to use Nostalgic Neg. I will be updating that course shortly uh, to add that and some more comparisons. So I will email everyone after that course has been updated.
But other than that, I want to thank everyone for spending an hour with me here. I hope it was worth your time. I hope you got it got you excited to go out right now, no matter what time of day or night it is, uh, with your camera and go out and see what these film simulations can do. So again, thank you, and I hope everyone enjoys the rest of your day or night, wherever you are.